Welcome, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to have Katya, who is a senior product manager that works on the query engine. She's going to tell us all about the new features in MongoDB 6.0. Uh, this is a lightning talk, so it is only 15 minutes. So please hold questions until the end, and don't forget to rate the session on the, uh, on the app, OK? Thank you so much. And with that, Katya. Hello. Thank you. Hope you can see me. I'm like, I think I'm sh shorter than the booth. Um, so yeah, thank you for coming. Um, just in case if we don't get to questions, I will be today in the build booth that we have on the third floor. Like it's like a half a day, so please feel free to come and ask questions. We have a laptop there, we can like write some queries if you want. So we'll be talking about what's new in query in uh, 6.0. Um, most of it about the aggregation, because that's where the, all the fun part happens. Um, and also I will touch up uh, on the change streams uh, because probably not all of them went to the, my session about change streams this morning just to make sure you know what's, um, what's new there. Uh, so we have a bunch of new, um, new, uh, new expressions for working uh, with in, in the aggregation. Uh, there are some cool stuff about the dollar lookup that now it can be run on sharded collections on both sides. Uh, Atlas Search is also part of the aggregation framework interface. Uh, so there are some uh, new features there, so, and we'll go through those. Um, so the first feature is ability to get the top and elements in each group. Um, so for example, let's say you have a collection of restaurants with a rating. You want to see the top three highest rated restaurants for each cuisine. So we will be grouping by the cuisine field. Here you can see it on, on, on the right. Um, and there is the, uh, so, and we will be creating the new field, which is called top. And that field we will be calculating using the new accumulator top N. Um, so you need to specify how many items you want to get. Let's say in this case, three. Uh, we'll specify how do we identify those items by, let's say in this case, we will be sorting, sorting by score. Um, you can sort by multiple, like by compound if, uh, sorts, fine, by multiple fields. Um, and then you decide what do you output, um, because this is basically fields from the, from the document. You may have many fields, so you just uh, include what you want. In this case, we will include name and score. And then you see that in the output, now we had the top field, um, and it's an array with three elements. And uh, you see there are three scores, and they're also like sorted in the order um, that you provided. Um, so there are more, like, more, more accumulators in the same family, but a little bit like slight different use cases. Let's say you already have um, the elements sorted. So maybe we have a collection where people bid on different products and those bid come like the latest will also get entered in the then so they already sorted by date. Um, so we don't need really to sort here. We can just show the last two bids in the order as they go. So for this, we can use dollar last n or also the, the opposite of it will be the first n. And here similarly, so we group by our item ID, the, the product that we're selling, and then to specify, to calculate the last bids, we use dollar $n, number of things we want to return, and um, what are we returning? So we, we're getting uh, the data from the, um, we just need to get the um, amount of bid and the timestamp of when it happens. So notice that in this case, um, it's actually, uh, it's like the order is actually flipped. So you see the early one uh, on top, the one at like 0, 0.25, and then it's, you can see, um, uh, 20, so 20, uh, 0, 0, and then, okay, sorry. So we see the timestamp 20, 0, 0, 25, and then 20, 0, 0, 44, uh, 44. So like as they went in the in that order, we just grabbed the two. Uh, so it didn't, didn't flip the water. But if we want to change the water, now we also have the new expression sort array. So that array of bits, we can now sort using the, uh, the sort array, specify which array we want to sort and uh, by which field. Again, the sort can be compound. We can sort 
array of, of objects or array of just like scalars. Um, there is a way to do it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty handy, like in the cases when you have something like that, or like maybe you have a post and an array of uh, comments, and they come in uh, by date, but you want to maybe show the most like voted uh, on top. So now you can use sort array for that. So as a summary, this feature uh, resulted in uh, multiple accumulators. So for stages like group, and set window fields. So set window fields is a window function. Uh, when you basically, you look at the few documents, but you do not output them as one, you output them still as a, those three documents, but for each of them, you calculate something based on those documents around. So we can call, uh, we call those like accumulators, those like top end, like when you calculate the average, for example, uh, the uh, like average, mean, max, so this is the new, uh, accumulators that can use uh, in those uh, stages, top and bottom end that we saw. Uh, and also in addition, there is max and min. Uh, so it's when, when we just need to get one value. We don't need to really return the object, but like show me the maximum five bits and we just get the, those the amounts uh, without uh, the, rest of the, uh, the rest of the objects. And uh, we try to keep the similar thing for the arrays. So if you don't need to use the group and look across the documents, but you're just working within one document and there is an array inside, you can use those first and last and on that array and just return the, um, the subset of array. What's next? Filling gaps in data. <clears throat> so if you, um, if you went maybe to Michael's talk yesterday about time series, this is something that often happens in time series when you sometimes your data um, has gaps. Let's say um, you have um, like every day you get a measurement or you have some scale and like price from one to zero and you want to build like a histogram of, but like you want to build a histogram of prices, but your prices are just like fall into a few buckets, but you still want to show all of them. Um, so now you can fill those gaps using the aggregation. Here's an example. Let's say we have a warehouse and from time to time someone comes in and uh, writes down the inventory and updates the inventory. And we want to know to like to plot on a graph how many items of each product we have daily. Um, but those, like the person that comes in, they don't come every day. So in this case, in this case they came every other day. So we only have data points for every other day, but we want to have like a nice graph that is like not interrupted. So how do we do this? So I have here like product one and product two, for example. So we have the new aggregation stage, which is called densify. So basically you say, what is your measurement that you want to densify? In this case, we have uh, the field date that we're trying to densify. And we specify what basically like what frequency we're trying to get. We need to get to daily. So we say the unit is day uh, and our step will be one. And uh, the bounds field is like when you decide like for basically <laughs> what part of this like timeline you're trying to fill in. Sometimes you can say like full, it's basically for whatever we have from the minimum value to the maximum value. Or you can specify just the specific period, maybe just for this week. Um, or you may say that like each partition, uh, for this case like it's product, each partition will have its own bound. So if product one was had values only last week, so we'll fill in only for the, within that week. And the product two in another week, then we'll fill in only through that week. So like there is some, you, you can decide. But in this case, we'll just be filling in for every day uh, that we have data for both products. And as an output of this stage, now we got the new document. So uh, in white one, there was an existing document when we had an inventory product ID and the date. And now for each product, we will create new document with just the date that we generated. We still don't know anything about the inventory uh, because we're just working with the date. So now to fill in the inventory value, we use the, oh, okay, yeah, sorry. I want to show like that on the like, on the X axis, we got this like little like, um, dots show that now we have actually days, but we still don't have the inventory. And now how to fill in the inventory? We have the dollar fill. So what dollar fill does is basically creates the fields in the document that are not existing. Um, so here we're trying to fill in 
the value for the inventory. Uh, we still want to do the separate values for each product, so we use partition field product, and we need to specify the sort order in this case, because we, what we want to do is say, if on the specific date we know nothing about the inventory, just use the last known value. So LOCF in this case is a, meta, ma, a method of fill is last, ob, last observed, last, last observation carried forward. So basically we're just taking the number of the inventory we had yesterday and just saying this is what it was today. Uh, so this like larger uh, circles on the graph, that's what we filled in. And now we can actually draw the line uh, uninterrupted and show the, the daily inventory. And here's an example of the document. Now we got that to the document that we created before. They didn't have the inventory field. Now we have it. So similarly, let's say if you have other measurement that we need other method for, for filling in, let's say the light blue on top is that inventory they filled in and the light green is the temperature. So when we fill in the temperature, we want to basically uh, just interpolate between the values that we know because like we expect the temperature to be like somehow um, uh, linear. And for the values like for example, motion detection, if there was no value for motion, then probably it was zero. So we just wanted to drop to zero and we can use the, just like the constant value. So that's the option that you can use when you fill in. So now the graph and lookup, uh, the graph lookup and, uh, and lookup are now available in charted collections. So what is lookup? Is It's the way for you to join two uh, collections. Uh, let's say we have a collection of uh, accounts. We want to see find accounts that are only in region of EMEA, and we want to get the transactions of those accounts from the different collection transactions. Uh, we will match by account ID, and we will also get only the top, the latest uh, 10 transactions. So inside of the lookup subpipeline, we also use sort and limit, just to not show too much. So before, uh, only accounts collection could be sharded and transactions collection could not be sharded. Like, that was unfortunately not supported. So now both of those can be sharded. And also the cool thing about it is like the shard targeting thing still works. And also the execution of uh, the lookup can be parallelized. So let's say you have your client, you send the query to MongoS to router, then that's gonna distribute queries uh, to the shard. We're looking for customers in EMEA. Um, accounts in EMEA. Let's say we use like zone sharding. We know that those customers are those two shards. So we went to find those customers. And then now we need to look up for the transactions. So each shard will do look up and find the transactions for those customers. And it will know that they say, you mentioned there are two customers. So for the customer who's in shard A, their transactions live on shard A and on shard C. So it will go and get those transactions. And in shard B only will go to shard C. And then those shards will actually uh, like merge the results and uh, give them back um, to MongoS and further to the client. So this can show some like really good uh, good performance improvement. Like if you have those like first accounts collection like evenly distributed, so you have let's say two accounts on each chart, then like you parallelize like the best. As opposed to let's say if you one account lives in one chart but hundred accounts on another chart, then we'll still have to wait for that hundred account lookup to happen. Um, uh, for it to be efficient. Okay, I'm running out of time. Okay, so then really quickly, Atlas Search now can be used in the sub-pipelines. There is another session about Atlas Search later today. Marcus has given it, so if you're interested in it, please go talk to him and listen uh, to his talk. Um, so basically, let's say we want to use Atlas Search to use uh, to search for posts that user created across multiple collections. So now we can do this uh, with one query. Basically we use union with to uh, combine uh, results from another collection drafts. And we also use dollar search as a sub pipeline there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Like in this case, I have the same, um, the same query here and there for search, but like potentially you can have different queries or like um, use different, like uh, adjust the score. So one of the uh, collection is more, um, uh, has more value. And another one is the same for the lookup. So if you have some kind of like correlated search, in this case, let's say we're searching for, uh, uh, we're, we're searching for uh, teachers, trying to match them with a 
uh, with uh, students and they live in the same um, location that's what we match on, but we also use uh, Atlas Search to find their interest. Um, so that's what we can do now, actually. Uh, before, we will only be able to use uh, Atlas Search on this first uh, collection. And the last part is the change streams. If you're using change streams, now you can use also pre and post time, uh, point in time pre and post images uh, in your change streams. This is really cool. Uh, so you can have the version of the document before update and after. Uh, this is the, how the setting looks like. You enable it on the collection. You put it. Um, you put the new option in the when you open the cursor, and you get it back. Uh, this is all available in the documentation now. If you switch to six all thing, um, because I'm out of running out of time. There are some other cool change from things that they also report the elements like index creation, view creation, collection sharded. So you can do that too. All right, I'm gonna wrap up. Thank you so much. As I said, please find me on the third floor if you have more questions.